Hello, welcome to The Repair Specialist, and in this video I'm going to go through some of the main reasons why a four-stroke engine can run out of oil so quickly. I shall be going through some very useful initial checks on the engine, how to find and test oil leaking out of the engine, so external leakages. Also included is a very good test to see exactly how much oil your engine is consuming, and we'll be looking at those elusive internal oil leakages, which of course can't be detected so easily like the common oil leak can. And I shall be showing you some diagnostic checks to find out which areas of the engine have the internal leakages. And finally, at the end of the video, I'm going to list some measures to help safeguard your engine from this kind of problem in the future. Okay, so first of all, if we're talking about oil loss in an engine, then we have to consider how much oil is actually being consumed. And this is largely because we need to gather an understanding of whether it's fair use or excessive use. And so if we could make a calculation for every 3,000 miles, and we find out that the engine is using half of a quarter and a quart is a quarter of a gallon and so we're talking about half of that quarter of a gallon so that's equivalent to one pint of oil well if it's around about this amount this is what is considered normal fair usage of oil in an engine but if the engine's using any more than this particularly if it's using a whole quart or more then this is considered as excessive use of oil and so we need to know exactly how much oil the engine is consuming and we can do this using the following test first make sure the vehicle or the machine is parked on a level surface surface. And if it's already on a level surface and has been there for a number of hours, overnight, etc., then we can go straight into the test. Otherwise, turn off the engine and allow approximately 10 minutes for the oil to drain back down into the engine sump. Next, remove the dipstick and clean it with a rag and then make sure it's fully inserted back down into its tube. After a moment or two, remove the dipstick again and then read the oil level. Now, assuming that your engine is using oil and that you've got less oil in there than you should have, which is showing on the dipstick, we now need to add to this oil to fill it to the correct level. And so now that it's filled to the correct level, as indicated on the dipstick, we then need to take a note of the mileage of the vehicle, as expressed on the odometer. We then use the vehicle as normal, keeping regular checks on the oil level to make sure it doesn't go too low. But remember, unless it does go too dangerously low, then we don't want to add to that oil at the moment. And that's because when we reach 3,000 miles on from our last mileage reading, it's at that point that we need to check the dipstick to see how much oil remains in the engine. So as before, we remove the dipstick, wipe it with a rag, fully insert it into the tube, and then lift it out to see where the oil level mark is. And assuming that we think the engine's got an oil consumption issue, and that's why we're doing this test in the first place, then upon this check, 3,000 miles later than when we filled it up to the right level, there will now undoubtedly be less oil in the engine. And now we've took an accurate measurement of how much oil is left in, we now need to add more oil in measured amounts so we can get an overall measurement of how much oil we have just added since we set the level correctly 3,000 miles ago. And so however much oil you have just added is how much the engine is using in a 3,000 mile period. And so, as we were saying before, if you've only added around about half of a quart, then this is normal engine usage of oil. But anything up to a quart or more, then this is excessive usage. And so, if we do find, after running this test, that the engine is consuming too much oil, then of course we need to find out where the loss is. And this can be occurring from either one specific place or several. But overall, there are two different types of leakages of an engine, either external or internal. And so let's take a look at the sorts of things that can cause either, starting with the external. Being a common type of oil leak, external leakages can be caused by many things, from damaged gaskets or seals to loose or damaged parts of the engine. And so an important thing to do right now would be to find out exactly where the leakage is. Of course, in some instances, this is self-explanatory, because after we've parked the vehicle and then we come to return to it a number of hours after, we can sometimes see a puddle of oil on the floor underneath the engine. And if nothing else, this is evident of an external leakage, but doesn't give an exact location as to where the leakage is coming from. And if there's a slight oil leak, then it's not always so clear to see exactly where the puddle is. And so one trick I always use is to cut out a piece of cardboard and then place it on the floor directly underneath the engine and leave it there for a while. Because what we'll then notice is that even the slightest drip of oil shows up very, very clearly as a wet patch on that piece of cardboard. In fact, I found this technique to be so good in the past that I identified oil leaks that I never even suspected. And what I mean by that is that I've been looking for a 
a particular area of leakage and found out that there's been several areas of leakage around the engine. In fact, whilst doing this test, I've even unwittingly identified gearbox leakages and brake pipe leakages at the same time. And although this test does seem so ridiculously easy and simple, it really is a good one to try. But the oil puddle itself has given you an indication of where you need to look. And what I do is get under the car and with a torch look directly above where the puddle lies. And I realise getting underneath is easier with some vehicles than others. Four wheel drives for instance, much easier to get under, there's more space. But we really need to get under there to take a look and find out what's going on, if we possibly can. And as I've mentioned, there are many possible causes. And so let's now take a look at some of these causes in further detail. Now the following are just a few common possibilities. I couldn't possibly mention every cause. And so one that I've come across in the past is to do with the engine sump. Because on many engines, the sump has a bottom cover that's bolted on to the bottom of the engine. And at the joint between the bottom cover and the engine is the gasket. This of course seals the joint between the two and sometimes these gaskets can degrade and flatten over time, which causes leakages. But it's worth mentioning that if we do trace oil leaks from this area of the engine, then it's not always attributed to the gasket. Sometimes the bolts that attach the bottom cover to the engine can come loose and that can cause a slight gap, enough for the oil to leak through. And so if we find that the oil is leaking from this area, then it's always worth checking to see if those bolts are tight because it could instantly remedy the problem. And there is a torque setting for these bolts, which you should find if you do an internet search on your particular vehicle or if you've got the service manual. But if there's no problem here, the bolts are nice and tight and you feel that the gasket's okay, but there's still evidence of oil puddling underneath the sump, suggesting that it's leaking from there, then there could be several other reasons why. Firstly, it could be the sump cover itself. There could be some damage there, however difficult to see. It could be something easy to spot, but it could be a very, very slight light crack, which of course is all that's needed to lose oil. And another common cause of leakage I've come across in the past is the oil drain plug. And there are two reasons why. First of all, the most common one in my opinion is when the old oil has been drained and the plug's been put back in, but not tight enough. And then when we refill it with new oil, it's slightly loose and it causes leakages. So the simple remedy here, of course, is just to check to see if this is tight enough. Again, going by the book, there should be a torque setting for this, for how tight this should be, which of course, again, you can find out either in your service manual or doing a quick internet search of your particular vehicle. But one thing to be mindful of, and this comes into the other cause of leakage relating to the filler plug, is that there's a special sealing washer accompanying this filler plug to keep it oil tight. And like any other gasket or seal, this can get crushed, worn and damaged over time. So it's a very good idea to take a good look at this washer when we remove the filler plug to see if there is any evidence of damage on there. In fact, for the price of these, we may as well replace them when we do a service. Because unless these washers seal correctly, no matter how tight we make the filler plug, to try and seal it, it will not seal. And in the past, I've seen people trying to tighten these plugs too tight to try and seal the gap, and all that's happened is the threads have stripped, which has created a whole lot more damage and cost to the engine. So always make sure that these filler plugs are put back in with the correct torque setting and that the sealing washer is present and in a good state of repair. Okay, so moving on to another common cause of external oil loss, and that's the oil pressure switch. Otherwise known as the oil pressure sender or the oil pressure sensor, its function is obviously to sense the pressure that the oil is in inside the engine. So it can alert the driver by putting on the oil light in the vehicle's dashboard if the oil pressure gets too low. But like many other parts of an engine, oil pressure switches can wear and degrade over time. And when they do, they can be responsible for quite common oil leakages of an engine. And the only remedy when it leaks like this is to replace it. They're quite inexpensive, but again, if you do an internet search of your particular vehicle, you'll find the correct item and a price. The next cause of leakage I want to talk about is the PCV valve. Normally associated with internal leakages, the PCV valve means the positive crankcase ventilation valve. And this valve is responsible for releasing high pressures building up inside the crankcase. So when pressures inside the crankcase do get too high, the valve opens and releases that pressure and the pressure feeds through a pipe 
to the top of the engine and is recirculated within the engine. But what can sometimes happen is that this pipe that leads to the top of the engine can sometimes degrade and oil can leak from that pipe. But it's important to say that the pressures building up inside this pipe are normally hot gases with traces of oil. And it's worth mentioning the importance of the PCV valves that if these were stuck closed then the pressure inside the crankcase would build up and blow out seals and gaskets and this would also put upward pressure on the piston rings. So assuming that the valve and the pipe needs replacing that's still relatively inexpensive and depending on the engine of your vehicle you'll find the PCV valve a little further up towards the top of the engine. And PCV valves are quite a common cause of oil leaks so it is well worth checking them out. Another cause of external leakage that I've come across in the past is the oil filter. On four-stroke engines such as cars, these are threaded, they're screwed onto the block and they have to be screwed on tight enough to allow the o-ring seal on the canister to correctly push against the block to prevent any oil leakages and what can happen over time is that this o-ring that exists on the canister can degrade just like any other seal or gasket on the engine and that can sometimes cause leakages also I have seen situations where these canisters have been replaced and not screwed in tight enough and that of course has caused slight leakages I actually had one particular instance where the canister hadn't been changed for a good year or two and that had actually gone rusty and degraded and it caused a slight hole to appear in the canister itself and that was leaking oil just slightly. So it's really important that we replace these canisters with every service and look at the owner's manual to see how often we actually have to do this. And that brings me on to my last cause of external oil leakage that I would like to mention and this is something I've come across in the past but it's not quite as common and that is the crankshaft main oil seals. These of course allow the crankshaft to protrude out of the engine block and allow it to turn freely without losing any oil out of the engine. But as I've mentioned throughout, like any gaskets or seals, these can also degrade over time and that can cause leakages. And to have this problem remedied is most certainly best done so by a professional at a repair centre. And so they're the reasons I wanted to mention about external leakages. Of course, as I've said, there will be many more, but I couldn't mention every leakage here. Those are the ones that are most common that I've come across. And so now I want to move on to possible causes of internal leakages, how to identify the symptoms and some diagnostic tests to pinpoint exactly where is leaking. Okay, so I want to start with the PCV valve again, because this is quite a popular cause and quite an easy rectifiable cause if it is this. And as I've already mentioned, the PCV valve can be a cause of external leakages if the pipe is also damaged. But if the PCV valve is malfunctioning, so if it's stuck open when it shouldn't be, but the pipe is in a good state of repair, then what can sometimes happen is that as the crankcase gases are recirculated from the crankcase up through the valve and through the pipes to the top of the engine to be reused again, then because this valve is stuck in its open position, oil also comes up with those gases. And so the oil is being reused unnaturally in the engine, and that can cause the engine to smoke quite extensively. Excessively. And the reason I'm mentioning this first is because it's so inexpensive to rectify, it's best to try this first. It's much more inexpensive than trying to repair piston rings or valve stem seals, that sort of thing. So it's always best to try a new PCV valve first. I'm not, of course, saying it's always the case, but that's my first recommendation if we find that your vehicle is smoking excessively. So imagining that the PCV valve is all okay and in a good state of repair, but the engine is smoking excessively, then another quite common possibility if it's fitted with a turbocharger is if the turbocharger is defective because what can sometimes happen is cracks can appear in the turbo's housing and the oil seals that exist in there can blow out and degrade over time allowing the lubricating oil to enter the exhaust turbine and then the oil of course is taken into the very hot exhaust where it burns and this produces a grey or blue smoke and so if you are getting this kind of smoke coupled with a power loss from acceleration then it could be your turbo that's the problem this of course will be a little more costly and will require a service of the turbo or a replacement. And so that brings me on now to the last two causes that I would like to mention. And these are the less common causes, but are the more expensive if they do occur. And they are the valve guides and the piston rings. So starting with the valve guides, as the engine runs and the valving system works and each valve moves up and down, the actual stem of the valves move up and down inside what we call a guide. And those guides have seals to prevent the lubricant 
lubricating oil that lubricates all of the mechanisms up here that move the valves, the rocker arms, etc., from getting into the engine. And sometimes what can happen over time is that even the stem seals can become worn or damaged, or the valve guides themselves can become worn or damaged. And so this can allow the lubricating oil to move into the engine internally and cause oil loss. This, of course, creates excessive engine smoking. And undoubtedly, one of the main causes of this kind of problem is the lack of regular servicing of the engine. And the last cause of engine oil loss that I want to mention, which is the piston rings, also creates excessive smoking. And they do this by allowing oil to travel up past the piston into the combustion area where it's burnt, creating that excessive smoke. And again, this can be caused by irregular servicing of the engine, which of course can result in the oil becoming thicker and having less lubricative properties and allowing for more wear on the piston rings and not tending to the correct oil levels where they get too low for too longer periods of time too often, also creating wear on the piston rings. And this of course creates wear on the other parts of the engine, such as the crankshaft and big end bearings. And when this occurs, there's more space between the components of the bearings. And this loads up more oil as the engine is running. And as the engine runs and loads up more oil, it throws more oil off. And as it throws more oil off inside the crankcase, it actually increases the pressure of oil. And this pressure of oil puts load upon the piston rings as the pressure pushes upwards into the piston rings because of all that extra oil that's now flooding the piston. And so these are some of the reasons why oil can pass the piston and burn in the engine and create excessive smoke. But because defective piston rings and defective valve stem seals and guides can both create internal oil loss and allow that oil to enter the combustion side of the engine, thus producing excess engine smoke, what we now need to do is distinguish whether it's going to be the valve guides that are the problem or whether it's the piston rings. So here are a couple of diagnostic tests to help find out which one is the problem. Now the following tests have worked for people I know in the past but they must be taken as a guide only and if your engine is burning oil it's best to go and see a professional. But if you do want to try these tests as a guide then keep watching. And so let's start first with the diagnostic tests for the valve guides. Okay first of all we start the engine and then we allow it to idle for several minutes to warm it up. And then we turn the engine off and then we restart it immediately and rev up the engine whilst observing the emissions from the exhaust, so observing the smoke itself. And so if there is excess smoke and it's bluish in colour and it appears initially as you rev up the engine and then clears, it's likely to be the valve guides. And of course to rectify this problem you'll need to take this to an experienced service engineer. And so moving on to the test for the piston rings, if we follow the procedure for the first test and then when we rev up the engine, the blue smoke doesn't clear. So we've got a mild bluish colored smoke which doesn't clear, then it's likely to be the piston rings that are the fault. And so moving on to preventative measures now, I can't emphasize enough the importance of regular servicing and oil changing. A lot of the problems I've mentioned can be caused by the oil going thick and gluggy and oil levels going too low as a result of lack of servicing. And it's this problem that can affect the PCV valves and the piston rings and the bearings inside the engine that can cause all sorts of problems such as this. And it's always best, in my opinion, to use the specified oil for your vehicle and maintain the right levels constantly. I personally also believe in using high quality oils. I never use low quality oils because they can produce more carbon just generally and this of course can affect the piston rings make them stick and defective other than that make sure that your cooling system is working correctly that there's always plenty of coolant in the system to prevent hot spots in the engine and distortions of the component parts within the engine that can cause certain problems similar to this and as i've mentioned these are just some causes of engine oil loss they aren't all causes of engine oil loss these are the ones that i've come across myself and so this is the information i wanted to give to you it's really a matter of using your vehicle and your engine respectfully. And so that now concludes the video. And please, if you have gained anything from it, then please do like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.